Uh, good afternoon. I think um, we'll get going. Um, I'm Trevor Fays, and I'm coach uh, sharing this uh, session with uh, Valkmar Falk and Dr. Califiori. Um, we'll get going straight away as we're behind time. And we're crossing straight away to Randy Chitwood's theatre just to, as the heart's arrested. And we'll change the program slightly and we'll have um, Dr. Minikanti presenting um, first up because he has to catch aeroplanes shortly. I'll get that appendage out of your way. Okay, thanks. Me nervous. <coughs> we cannot hear you. Okay. So while we have no sound here, we can present the case from here as well. Obviously, it's a 49-year-old male with dyspnea on exertion, and my three since 10 years. Uh, chest X-ray is uh, pretty normal. Good ejection fraction, and you can see the mitral insufficiency, very large atrium. It's actually a, a, a very thin patient, so good candidate. Okay, can you hear me again? Yeah, sorry. So I start from the beginning. I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> Our robotic mitral valve case is 49 years old. He had dyspnea on exhaustion and mitral regurgitation since 10 years, and now he suffers from progression of the LA di diameter. So looking to his angel angiogram, he had an ejection fraction of 33%, and you can see the mitral regurgitation, which is grade 3. He presents normal coronaries. And looking to the echo, he had a mitral valve annulus of 44 millimeters and a prolapse of the P1 and P2 segment with um, suspected cordial rupture and an enlarged left atrial diameter of 64 millimeters. And here you can see the um, posterior leaflet prolapse again. And concomitant eccentric mitral regurgitation with a PISA of 0.97. So this patient, a normal aortic valve also, this patient is planned for a robotic mitral valve repair, which will be performed by, <clears throat> by Wiley Nifong and Randy Chitwood. To present another patient, too. Randy, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear us. We're just uh, arresting the heart and uh, giving some plegia. And in just a minute, we'll be putting the arms in and we'll be putting the um, uh, new retractor. This patient has a very long atrium, and so it will be challenging because we're using a brand new retractor. There are four arms on this robot. One is the camera and, of course, two operating instrument arms. In addition, we have a a third operating arm, which is a fourth arm, and it's a retractor. It's a new type of retractor. I think you'll uh, very much enjoy seeing this. We've used it three times before. It worked very well. Kept uh, air out of the aorta, got great exposure to the trigones and to the annulus. And so as Wiley and uh, Stefan are just giving that last bit of cardioplegia, uh, we open the atrium and uh, we should be ready to go in just one second. But I want to make sure that the heart is arrested well before we do that. So regarding the setup, uh, since you're using four arms now, is there any difference in terms of uh, placing the ports for this procedure? Yeah. Not for the instrument arms. Um, the instrument arms are in the third interspace, and I believe the fifth or sixth. It's kind of hard to tell, uh, the right arm. And they converge, of course, at the annular plane. The the third arm that goes through the chest wall is placed just above the left arm and almost in the anterior axillary line. Uh, it's sort of uh, just a little, a little medial to the anterior axillary line. Of course, you have to be careful. We put a camera in to make sure that there was not going to be any injury to the uh, internal mammary vessels. But that arm sort of is, comes in a different attitude than the standard retractors that you and I have been using for a long time.